Hello, and welcome back to theCUBE's coverage here in New York City at IBM's One Madison headquarters. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE for the IBM Z launch. A lot of great action. Tina Tarantino is here, Vice President of Product, IBM Z and Linux One. Tina, great to see you here on the launch with exciting news. We had a chat prior at the NYSC where we talked a lot about, you were kind of teasing it out, but now it's all revealed. Welcome back. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so now we can freely talk <laughs> about the next generation mainframe we've announced. So Rick Lewis had shared at the uh, investor meeting, and it was mentioned in the keynote today um, as, as well, about some of the performance numbers. What, is main, what has been the main driver for the success of the mainframe up to this point? Because a lot has been unveiled here that's going to look like a major one revenue driver and a value creator for enterprises that are looking for the transaction processing. Yeah, so I think you're referencing Rick Lewis and, uh, and Ross mentioned that our growth over the last three programs have really been phenomenal, right? We've Our revenue has outperformed program to program for the last three, but also our installed capacity of our clients has grown about 3x over the last 10 years. And I really attribute that to really laser laser focus on you know outcomes for our clients. Really, we've spent over 2,000 hours with our clients doing user research to come up with what are we going to put in the next generation mainframe and really focusing on what they need, when they need it, and how they need it. A lot was announced, uh, Z17, Linux 1.5 showcased here today. Um, there's going to be an ongoing set of other uh, unveilings at Think and Red Hat Summit. Um, the tagline, do more at the core. Um, love it, you had a tagline, I think from chip to ship, obviously you're in product management. You guys have done an amazing amount of work. Um, I mean, the time, the clock was, was not the friend today, all the announcements and the news to get out there from every all the presenters. Take us through the hard news. Walk us through what was the key announcements today for Z17. Yeah, so we announced IBM Z17. It's our next generation mainframe. Uh, we're really excited to bring this type of capabilities to our clients. I would say the big news is AI, uh, throughout the stack, right? So this is a full platform launch. So AI, uh, AI technology on the chip, uh, attached uh, Spire accelerator, PCIe attached for new workloads, um, and AI all the way up through the full software stack. And I do talk about from chip to ship. So uh, what I really love about the mainframe platform is that we have teams that work on the silicon all the way through the software and application layer. And that's part of our secret sauce, right? We really work together to optimize that platform. I want to get into the, uh, some of the breakthroughs, at least from our standpoint as the analyst looking at it, it was very much a, I won't say an awakening, but it was really more of a dot connecting moment for us because you can see everyone kind of knows the mainframe. You guys have been performant and dominant in the financial services area, but there was a whole AI first kind of design concept and architecture, um, tell them two processors, probably AI accelerator, the form factor and the scale were huge kind of new things. Could you um, share some of the thoughts behind that, behind the processor, the accelerator, and then the form factor uh, really kind of designed for AI? Yeah, so in addition, I mean, this system will be bigger, uh, bigger capacity, right? So it'll be almost 250,000 MIPS and it'll have the, the eight nines of resiliency that our clients depend on. You know, 90% 90, 90 of the world's credit card transactions flow through the mainframe. And so we infused AI throughout the stack. So Intellum 2 is a next generation system processor. It has our uh, next generation AI acceleration on the processor. So we've increased the, increased the throughput for AI uh, activity uh, seven and a half X, but we also have reduced the amount of energy it takes to produce that throughput. So really proud of those types of metrics. We introduced the Spire Accelerator, which as you mentioned is a PCIe attached. A card. So this is where we'll start to run generative AI and large language models. On Telem 2, we'll, we'll continue to, to increase our ability to do predictive AI, and then we'll combine that now with the generative AI capabilities. So this is really exciting for our clients who want to run a multi-model environment. And we've in the software stack, we're adding on our Watson X uh, platform, right? So we have Watson X Assistant for Z and the Watson X Code Assistant for Z. And both of those will be able to run on Spire, which means on-prem, on Z, with all the qualities of service of Z when they're available in the fourth quarter. Uh, you and I were talking before we came on camera, also asked a question about this earlier, about the, um, the, the accelerator as a PCI Gen 5 card um, and the and the processor itself is really well designed. So it's it's on the board, right? It's and. That's not, that's not a disadvantage. It didn't really kind of jump out at me as a negative. I saw it as kind of a net positive. Share the importance of that. What's the alternative going outside, off, off the system? Because I think this is one of those things where you can have optionality with the car accelerator yeah. and take advantage of the silicon advancements. 
Yeah, so normally if you were to do a simple, you know, go through a financial transaction, you'd want to score that transaction. Is it, you know, detection for fraud? Is it anti-money laundering? And if you don't run that, you know, fully on-prem on the system, your alternative is to to put it off-platform. You ETL mm -hmm. the transaction off, you do the scoring, and you bring it back. Uh, most of our clients don't have that yeah. SLA requirement yeah. that allows them to do uh, you know, have that amount of time, which is really how we arrived at putting the AI acceleration on Tellum too. We wanted low enough latency that you could score every transaction within the SLA and, and, and you know, still meet your performance goals, which is, you know, I'm proud to say our teams have delivered. Yeah. And, then, and doing that alternative is going to have a performance hit as a well. A performance Huge hit, latency. a security hit. I mean, those aren't risks our clients really want to take. And as a consumer, I don't want them yeah. to take them either. Yeah, yeah. And the silicon's great. And I think one of the things that jumped out at me too is the the, the success formula in AI seems to be a couple things. One, just from an architecture standpoint, from a silicon standpoint, getting closer to the silicon mm. is, is all the alpha developments going on. I say alpha, I mean like the hardcore. That's where the performance can be unlocked. And then the, the enablement on top of that is going to come at the data layer. Again, this is something we talk about all the time. But the things that jumped out at me that I heard, words like real time, multimodal, generative AI, these are table stakes, foundational elements that have to be built into the system yep. level, down to the core. And again, th that's the theme, that tagline, to the core. Um, and so you're getting major inf inference improvement. I, I wrote down notes, 7.5x inference throughput, uh, 5.4x energy savings. It's an AI integrated chip level innovation. Talk about why that's important for those three characteristics and what happens next. Yeah, so in order to get that kind of like throughput and that kind of savings and that and just the performance that our clients demand, it had to be, you know, right on the on the other side of the bus. So when that transaction goes through, you know, you can easily execute the scoring and get back to continuing the transaction and have those, you know, if you're swiping your credit card, you want that to happen quickly, right? We all want that to yeah. happen quickly. Um, and so when you start to move into, well, what if that score comes back and it's not it's not a high enough confidence score? Well you know, the, the payment companies want to run a second model and that model is usually bigger and is different in nature. And that's where you want to run it on the Spire accelerator. And we've designed Spire so that it can run that second model and still meet all the SLAs yeah. like that. That's pretty. So we're talking like, you know, milliseconds of time yeah. here. And so but once we have this Spire accelerator, well, now we can start to run the generative AI models. And this is really where you can unlock use cases across the enterprise in terms yeah. of productivity and just better outcomes. And so what's next? is you know unlocking these use cases for our clients yeah. the spire accelerator being pcie yeah. attached means that we have the ability you know in between generations to deliver right. new capabilities and i think having the gen ai llm ready really kind of hits the large scale models too and that's going to be a very key thing from the computing primitive standpoint. Um, one of the things that jumped out at me was the uh, on-chip DPU, mm. and, the, and, and the accelerator gets the buzz because Spire is cool, but yeah. the on-chip DPU is also another highlight with eight custom microcontrollers per cluster. I mean, all these like hardware yeah. gems on the board itself. Yeah, it really, it really unlocks, you know, the full power of the mainframe. So we introduced the DPU. This is our, uh, you know, an, an IO accelerator on-chip so to speak. So in the prior generations, we actually had ASICs on a, on a car that you would plug into the system. And we've moved all that capability from those ASICs onto the processor itself. And so not only does that allow, uh, you know, higher performance and, you know, better optimization, but now we've freed up a huge amount of space in the, in the system in which you can populate with your Spire accelerators. You know, the other thing that jumped out before we get into the use cases, I want to dig into the stack implications for the use cases that it's enabling is that Massive uh, IO concurrency is going to be a huge thing in the coherency. You hear about parallel processing and you know, some of the other conferences, but the coherence across uh, the system uh, is a transactional element. And, the, and in the news here is like transaction processing is now going mainstream because that's not just what you guys have been doing with Z in, in yeah. the mainframe and financial services. Again, 70% of all financial transactions go through Z, which is a huge stat. Uh, people might not know that, but that's not just in financial services. There's a lot of other markets that come from the transaction processing game that is enabled by all this action around the data and the soon to be agentic systems they're going to be doing, they're going to, you're going to need to square those workflows too. I mean, as you use the word squaring and scoring, that's a financial term you've used on stage, but there's going to be new things coming that's transactional. Could you shed some light into what that's going to look like? Yeah, I would say over the last three or four years, I mean, the digital transformation across, 
you know, across industries has really, the velocity has picked up. And I think our clients are seeing productivity gains, they're seeing better business outcomes. And so that only incents them to do more. And, uh, you know, when you wanna do more, you need to scale, you need to do it securely. If you're in a regulated industry, you know, you're answering to regulators, you're answering to audits frequently. So you really need to make sure the environment you're doing this all in, uh, you know, is, is the right one for the job. And, you know, with the mainframe with Z17, we really enabled our clients to just unlock, do what they need to do and to do it in, in the best safe environment possible. You know, one of my favorite slides that they showed to all the analysts was the two circles, predictive and then generative AI. Those all have use cases. As it comes together, it intersects and kind of connects. Mm -hmm. You have kind of the sweet spot that's predictive and generative, but also both of the markets are hot for for Z2. Can you explain some of the use cases? I mean, Predict has been around, it's not new for yeah. IBM, but all those use cases like fraud detection, money laundering, and then what's the Gen AI side? And then what's at the center of that? What's the intersection? Yeah, so predictive AI, like you talked about, we've been doing you know machine learning type of scoring on the platform uh -huh. for a long time. We've, we've worked with our clients to really help them there. Uh, if you think about generative AI, this is where you're using encoder decoder models. Uh, this is where a Watson X assistant, a Watson X uh, code assistant, you know, we're using generative AI to help help our clients achieve skills that maybe they want to save time and do something else mm -hmm. or get, you know, newer talent on board um, and upskill them quicker. Where those two, two meet, to me, is where we're really going to unlock a whole lot of potential. So a simple use case is, you know, like an insurance claim, right? So yeah. if you had an insurance claim, you might go in and, <laughs> and write what happened. And so the insurance model would you know, the, the, the claims review model would take, you know, sort of static data around homeowner policy, location, you know, actuarial data about what's happened in the area. And now it's going to take an encoder model and read the pros that's been text in, you know, someone broke in my mm -hmm. house and it's going to use that for sentiment analysis. And it's going to mm -hmm. understand, you know, is this nefarious or is it a true claim? And so you take this encoder model with the, you know, the, the, predictive model around the static data. And now you can get to, you know, is this, you know, is this a real claim? Should we send it to a person to really evaluate or can we approve it? It's a lower. So that's where you're really going to get some, some use yeah. cases unlocked. And uh, I love the comment that was presented around AI being infused foundationally. It's not just the technology, it's, a, it's yeah. inherent because you have AI in the system itself, making yeah. the system better, but then you have the AI enablement for the applications kind of both hitting. It's a double bottom line win. Yeah, I think mean, about AI it. is throughout the stack, right? So you'll see we have AI powered security. These are things like, you know, ZOS uh, threat detection, right? Using AI to help identify, you know, is the same data set being accessed multiple times in a way that's a unique pattern, right? And is that, you know, some bad behavior? We have uh, sensitive data tagging. So going through different types of record sets or data sets and and, you know, redacting personal, you know, information so that those data sets yeah. can then go off to a data scientist and create your model in a safe way. So AI is being used throughout yeah. the stack. Yeah, and this is going to be a great lift for Z because now it becomes, it brings it to a you know, rarefied air because it, the experience on scale and the transactions brought out. Ross said on his opening, uh, I wrote some notes here, Z is not just surviving, it's thriving. Mm -hmm. Clients are modernizing around Z, 2X increase in use cases, revenue growth tied to innovation, not just footprint was. And, and then you, know, you came on and talked about the design, the personas involved, the work you guys did. Share some insight into that piece of it because there was a lot of things that, it's a lot of legacy in the mainframe that, that's built in and the AI's coming in. You guys identified work streams and workflows. Talk about the personas you talked to and some of the work you've done to kind of make it easier, simpler to use and automate. Yeah, so first I, I always say, uh, you know, we're obsessive with this client feedback, right? So we leverage IBM design thinking. For Z17, we spent over 2000 hours with our clients understanding the technology that, that they would like us to deliver, when and how to deploy it. And that really as a product owner is how I decide what we, what we should prioritize, right? I don't have a blank check to do everything I want all the time. Uh, so with them, you know, we work through, you know, what should be the priorities and what do we want to introduce with Z17. On the simplification front, um, you know, we have done a lot of work to on the application developer persona. And so we've worked through that they have a standard DevOps pipeline cloud native feel. Um, and now we're shifting our focus to sort of the system administrators, right? Looking through the entire system and understanding where can we reduce complexity or abstract things, remove altogether tuning parameters. Um, and that's a heavy lift, but we really want to lower that bar um, in terms of skills in the industry and making them, you know, as common as possible. So how are you feeling? You're feeling like relieved now to take a little small break and then game starts again for you. 
Uh, well, I'm excited. I mean, I think uh, Ross showed the technology yeah. outlook, right? So we are always working on two or three yeah. mainframes at a time. They take about five or six years to yeah. develop and bring to market. And we introduce them every two and a half, three years. So uh, for sure, we have the next generation underway. But I'm excited. It's really fun to work on something for many years. And then we finally introduce it to all of our clients. And I joke all the time when I say, uh, what's my favorite mainframe? <laughs> and it's it's always the next one. So I'm excited. <laughs> and the next is in the name, pun intended. So I have to ask you, as someone who runs product, you have the keys to the kingdom. You got the inside look to IBM. You're seeing the innovation. Ross laid out a roadmap, which, you know, it's you don't have a, you know, people don't just come into the ecosystem and out. You have steady customers basing their business on IBM Z. So you've got a you know, three to five year outlook. He mentioned some of those operating cycles. You have to build kind of multiple yeah. years out. You have that 20 mile stair. Um, the customers are expecting it because they're designing their business around Absolutely. Z. So what are you working on? What are the key goals for uh, next two, next plus two and three? Because I know there's a, uh, I think you said 2027, put it out in a couple of years. I don't know how far he went out, but you guys have to, work on the next logic and the yeah. next system. So we already have a, a great things? we already have a great group of people that are working on the next processor and we have a small small team out front on the next next processor. Uh, so for sure you're continue to see us uh, work on performance, resiliency, scalability, uh, serviceability and security. I mean these are the table stakes, right? So we'll bigger, better, better, faster as I like to mm -hmm. say, more capacity, more memory, all of those things will continue. Yeah. Uh, you'll see us really focus on on accelerators, right? Yeah. So we've have an AI accelerator. We've introduced encryption and compression accelerators, really looking at the end end transaction and where can we like accelerate mm -hmm. one part to make a difference. Um, sustainability, I think, will continue to be a focus area for our clients, and so you know we'll continue to focus there. And I think you know it's it's you know yeah. nobody has a crystal ball in the AI space, but doing yeah. everything we can to be ready as the market changes. Yeah. One final question for you because you mentioned something I want to uh, get out there because I think. Uh, I heard, I saw the accelerator and that's a great optionality for bringing the models. Because one question that analysts are asking, including us, is you know, how do you future proof the change yeah. in the models? Um, and then Ross made a mention that Z has been built out, overbuilt. It's got a lot of performance in there. Yeah. So there's a lot of headroom. Talk about the importance of that because you kind of decoupled the velocity and the step function change in the model side while preserving the innovation that you guys have. And I think this is an important headroom piece. Could you just illuminate the importance of that piece? Yeah, I mean, we've we've engineered the system to give us that headroom, right? So, you know, initial uh, Spire will support 48 uh, cards in a system, but we have plans to support 96 cards within a year. And so we know we have that headroom built in. We know the models are going to get better. We, bigger. We know the way models are going to be paired together yeah. are going to change. So um, really making sure that our software stack above there is as agile as possible. Um, from a compute point of view, you know, we have clients that are always yeah. pushing the edge. And so we, yeah. we try to make sure that we're just a few steps ahead of them always and that they don't run out of, you know, they have the room that they need. Uh, so that's really how we're, we're driving the roadmap. Yeah. And then, you know, as we build those systems two, three out, yeah. we already know like how, how yeah. big we want to make them. Well, the market's hungry for more compute and more, and you got the you got all those components engineered for performance, bounded by energy, a huge part of the success, yeah. uh, not just throughput, the energy savings engineered well into the system. So that's going to be a big factor. Uh, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm glad uh, to be back. All right, okay. Uh, Tina's here inside theCUBE. We'll see a lot more action as we go to IBM Think and a lot of other events. That the concepts of big systems are powering the wave of AI and IBM Z launch happened today. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE. Thanks for watching.